Hi, welcome to Center of Air Reports Today. I'm Maureen Russell Hodson. And as our military return home to their homes, they sometimes run into some trouble with the law. They've been protecting us. Now it's our turn to help protect them. And one of their protectors is our guest today, and it is the Honorable Judge Dennis Adkins. And Judge Adkins, thanks for being here today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You have a terrific program that we first heard about at our Centerville City Council meeting, which is a special court system for those folks who are returning from service. That is correct. It's called Veterans Treatment Court. And it really is doing good work here in Montgomery County. But it's a, it's a program that's offered throughout the United States, right? It is. Uh, there were the last count I had, there was about 130, 140 courts across the nation. Uh, there's not very many in Ohio. In fact, in this area, we're the only one. The closest one to us is in Hamilton County. But it's growing. Uh, there's, a, there's a need for it, and we see every day more and more courts are forming. And, and the folks who are coming to this court, it's a regular court, but it's a court set up specifically for those who have served in the military and have needed to go in front of a judge. Yes, uh, it's the, everyone in the uh, program are veterans and they've become involved in some way with the criminal justice system, which means they've been arrested uh, for a crime and they enter to Montgomery County Common Pleas Court and if they qualify for probation, if they qualify to be in the Veterans Treatment Court, they can go into our program, which is a much more intensive program than regular probation. Okay, and we have a, pro a video that we like to show you about the program. It's very powerful, and I think it says a lot of the information that we'll be talking about following. So we'll take a look. the nightmares, the beating up my wife while I was asleep at night just was intolerable. I thought I was going crazy. I wanted everything to end. I wanted to get revenge. I wanted to die. When I returned home from Vietnam in 1968, I had no idea what post-traumatic stress disorder was. I just thought, hey, everything's normal, and I was drinking a lot. Whether or not they were in Vietnam or Iraq or Afghanistan, most of them are very, very young. I have clients at 23 years of age who've done seven tours. Their family said each time they came back, they were more and more disturbed. And you can see how it would be very difficult to recover from that. And you can see how someone might use alcohol as a coping mechanism. The suicide rates alone should be justification for us as a community to stand up and to help these veterans. Veterans Treatment Court actually arose out of the increasing numbers of young veterans that were returning with post-traumatic stress and intersecting with criminal justice, and also examining the huge number of our homeless Vietnam era vets suffering from untreated post-traumatic stress disorders. So what we wanted to do was create an environment where they could receive evidence-based treatment to support each other in their pathway to recovery. Veterans treatment courts are so unique in that instead of sending those who serve to jail or prison, they utilize volunteer veteran mentors from the community. I mean, veterans will literally come to the courthouse and mentor these veterans who are struggling with substance abuse or mental health conditions. We advise them, we support them, we also point out various VA opportunities for them. 
it's not a combat situation, but you build that trust and confidence in each other, and that's what's helped me with my PTSD, too. Regardless of how you feel about the war, we took these human beings who are healthy and strong and brave, put them in a situation that we know profoundly changes human beings. One of my really good friends was killed. I mean, it really devastated me. I wanted nothing to do with anybody but, you know, crawl in a bottle and go drink. There was this young girl, maybe about 16, 17 years old, and she was a cashier. And I saw her, in my mind, wearing a burqa. Instantly, I wanted to punch her. And I remember shifting my shoe left to right, and I tapped on the floor, and I said, this isn't sand, and this isn't dirt, and I'm not in another country somewhere. Luckily, I was able to have gone through some PTSD courses. The VA and the court system provided for me. Diaphragmatic breathing and cognitive thinking, those tools are what helped me pull myself out of my own head. Veterans Treatment Court are solving so many issues that veterans are facing. The whole program is life-changing for these guys. It gives them a second chance. Veterans Court has taught me that I'm in this and I'm gonna get out of this what I put into it. I feel like I'm giving something back, something that my generation never got when we came home from Vietnam. There's nothing more thrilling and seeing a mentee come in there screaming and yelling and almost saying, I want no part of this program. And then 18 plus months later, seeing them graduate as totally different people. And I have yet to attend one of those without needing a handkerchief. I can't emphasize enough the fact that we need to have a combat vet court in every jurisdiction in the United States. Justice is not just unless we, as a community, stand up and help them regain who they were to make them whole. So we are fortunate enough to have that program right here in Montgomery County. Walk us through the steps of how that works for someone who is in trouble with the law and is a veteran. Sure. They uh, can come into the program by a couple of different means. One means is they've committed some sort of crime uh, and they are eligible for probation. They are evaluated to see if they meet the criteria of our program and they can refer directly into our program. Also, others that are actively on probation that are struggling, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, can be referred into the program as well. We also have what we call intervention lieu of conviction program, which means if someone enters a plea of guilty, uh, it's held in abeyance and they're allowed to complete the program. If they complete the program successfully, then their conviction can actually go away. And we actually have one who actually went to prison, was released early back into the program. So there's various means of coming into the program. And there are a lot of players um, on someone's team. You have a mentor, right? We do. We, we have a, a very uh, large staff. We have a, a veterans outreach coordinator we work very closely with from the VA. We have someone to represent from the prosecutor's office, the public defender's office. We have, we even have um, job coordinators where we're trying to find jobs uh, for the veterans that are there every docket. Then you mentioned uh, the mentoring program, which is a very important aspect of our program, that we have a, um, a mentor coordinator whose job is to recruit and, and, um, and help um, establish mentors for everyone that's in the program. And how many people have gone through the program, what kind of success rate do you have? We worked on the program for about a year and launched the first docket in December of 2013. We had eight in the program. Okay. Uh, in just a, in a year, we're, we're up over 60. Oh my gosh. That's in the program. It's really growing. Then. It has. It's and, grown. And getting good success, it's been helpful? It has. We've had um, so far two that has completely graduated. Uh, and then we have another graduation coming up probably in about another month where two or three more are going to be graduating from the program. So a lot of good things are coming out of this program, which when I was asking you before we started the program what the cost is, the funding sounds pretty good, I think. Yeah, we, um, I, I like to tell people that we're not asking for any additional tax dollars yeah. for this program. We're all just doing more. I still do my regular job as judge. This is just something extra that I do. Probation department just does something extra. The resources at the Veterans Administration are still there, no matter if we use them or not. 
Uh, so it's uh, not only uh, we're not spending more tax dollars, we're probably actually saving some money by using some other resources. Why is this program so important to you since you're, you're giving a lot of your time? Well, I, I have a special place in my heart, uh, you know, for veterans, I always have. I come from a very military background. Uh, my, my brother was a highly decorated Vietnam War veteran and he had PTSD when he came back from Vietnam. Um, I didn't uh, know it at the time. In fact, it just dawned on me a couple of years ago is what he had, but there was times that I had to go out and, and uh, be with him while he struggled. And uh, he was able to overcome it himself and was very successful. And, and uh, when he died, he died a colonel in the Ohio National Guard. But I could see very easily how he could have ended up in the criminal justice system. So those veterans, we want to help. And to get more information, a good place to start is to go to montcourt.org and you can find out more information about how to become involved in the program. But you were saying you probably, if you're a veteran and have some trouble with the law, you're, you're going to be recommended or you may be referred to this program anyway? You could be. Um, now, some uh, veterans do quite well in what we call regular probation. Yeah. These are the ones that are struggling that, uh, that have the post-traumatic stress disorder, the traumatic brain injuries, the depression, the alcoholism, substance abuse as a result of their military service. So that's the ones that uh, we are working with. And when they come to court, it's, it's just like a regular court setup, right? I mean, what's the difference? Well, there's, the big difference is uh, it's just for veterans that are in the courtroom. And these veterans have to be there the entire docket. Uh, so they see what everyone goes through when oh, they appear okay. in front of me. And what that has done that I've seen, it's developed sort of a camaraderie like you have in the military that they're supporting their fellow veteran there to do the right thing. And when they mess up, they get on them. When they do something well, they congratulate them. And we advance them through various phases in the program and, and congratulate them. And we make a, a big deal of them actually graduating from the program, which is, it's really intensive and they have to go through a lot in this program. It's very well earned, I'm sure. Yes. And so if someone's interested in becoming a mentor, how, how would they go about doing that? Well, they can contact the court directly. They can go to the, uh, the website that you just gave which um, uh, has a short video on the mentoring program. Also, they can call our uh, veteran mentor coordinator and uh, we'll have the number there on the screen mm -hmm. that they can call, uh, say they want to be involved. We will train uh, any mentors. There's not a whole lot of uh, uh, time that you have to spend, but we want to make sure you understand the program, understand the court system. So we'll make sure you're comfortable before you, you get a mentee. And you should be a veteran, right? Yes, that's one of the requirements that we have because that's the whole program is, is based upon one veteran helping another veteran. And that's the whole idea. So all our mentors are veterans. So anybody who has served is welcome to call and get more information about the program. And when you, when you um, commit to being a mentor, you're committing to a year or two years. Is there a certain time commitment? There's no certain time commitment. Uh, it's as long as you're able to, to serve. And you don't necessarily have to be a veteran. You can be an active uh, military. Okay. We, we have uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force, Air Force Base here. So anyone who is active or retired military can be a mentor. And is the goal to not have to have a court like this at some point? That well, that would be great if we didn't have to yeah. ha have a court like this, but there really is a need. Just yeah. as the video showed, uh, every day 22 veterans are committing suicide in this country. I had country. no idea of that stat. That's unbelievable. So we're trying to trying to help. And there are other ways, too, that folks can help veterans as well. But, but um, from your website, I think it really gives people an idea to understand what some of these men and women are coming home with. Uh, they're different people sometimes. They are, and I've talked to family members, and um, they talk about how they've changed, how different they are, and each time they come home, they're a little bit different. And I've had uh, spouses and, and parents, uh, once they've advanced to the program, actually thank me for giving their, their, their daughter back or their son back or their spouse back uh, because we work very intensely with them to, to work on the underlying okay. problems that's causing them to get involved with whatever they got involved in. Well, for more information, you can talk with Judge Adkins via 225-4801, um, or you can go to the website, which is montcourt.org. Thank you for doing such good work for the veterans in our community. Thank you, Marie. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.